Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason, my guy behind the camera is Trenton, and this is the Diamond Knife Company. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're gonna to be looking at paracord. We've got quite a bit of paracord on the table along with some smaller micro cord. And with this, I'm gonna be showing you how I like to make my lanyards for my pocket knives. But before we get into that, I did wanna mention a company that is not a sponsor of the channel. However, we have recently used them to make some caps for us. They were able to put our logo on a leather patch for the caps. Um, the name of the company is Safari Sun. They did a fantastic job. Um, their customer service is outstanding. So if you're looking for a cap, something similar to this that you wanna have made, definitely check them out. We'll leave all their information down below so you can do that. Now let's get into making these paracord lanyards. All right guys, before I jump into showing you how to tie this stuff, uh, I'm gonna show you a few of the lanyards that I already have on some of these knives. Um, you can see this one I use, the classic uh, Schmuckatelli skull bead on this one. This one's on um, the uh, honey badger, the large honey badger. And this one is the diamond and blue and white paracord. And then I've got the blue micro cord on there over it. And then this one is the, like I said, this is the Schmuckatelli classic skull bead and pewter. Then we also have one here with the Emerson, which I've showed you guys before. This is my favorite Schmuckatelli bead, Emerson skull bead right there. And then this one, I've got it on my, uh, my Hogue uh, K320. And this is in a, I believe this is Goldenrod with the Coyote paracord over that, the micro cord. And then on the small honey badger, again with the golden rod and then um, with the red micro cord and then here is the buck um, anvil bead there and I believe that's in pewter as well so you can see that on both sides so it's just a standard uh, uh, cobra stitch over the paracord so I'll show you how to do that I'm going to show you a couple more of the beads before we get into it. there's another uh, Schmuckatelli bead. This is the Tiki bead. You can see that there. There's the back of it. And then I'll show you this uh, Schmuckatelli, uh, I believe they call this one the Mind Skull. So it's got the skull and then it has all the smaller skulls on top of it right there. And it's kind of on one side. And then it just has the standard skull the rest of the way around. There. And then you can see where the hole, on all of them, the hole, how it goes through there. And then comes out on the bottom. And then if you don't have any of these beads and you just want to do it without, you could do that. Um, or if you have any, uh, like these wooden style beads, as long as the hole is large enough. You could use something like this if you wanted to. And here's another one that I did with the tan with the Coyote Brown uh, micro cord over it. Again with the Emerson bead. And then here's another one with a different type. This is the snake knot. I'll show you how to make this one as well. And you could do this one with a bead or without a bead. So this is just a navy, it's like a darker navy colored uh, paracord. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, we're going to do, on this first one, we're going to do on my Spyderco Manix. We'll do the first one on this one. So if you can, if you have one, uh, it really helps to have a vice like this. Um, this is just a cheap... Um, bench vice that I got from, I believe I got this from, from Harbor Freight. So, but it makes it a lot easier to tie because you can position your knife where you need it to and it's not, it's not fumbling all over the place. Um, on this one, I'm going to use the black micro cord 
And all of this paracord for the most part, other than this one right here that I'm using, I believe I got this at like, I think I got this glow in the dark paracord either at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. One of the two I picked this up, this glow in the dark. But uh, all the rest of my paracord that I have, all the nano cord, the micro cord, and the 550 cord, they're all from Atwood Rope Manufacturing. And I will leave uh, the links to all of these so that you can check them out if you like any of this paracord. So what you're gonna need to do, um, you're gonna need the vise, you're gonna need um, a lighter, and then you're gonna need a pair of scissors. Um, so we'll, we'll cut just a, a small piece of this uh, cord, just enough for what we're gonna be doing for about the, about the length of the lanyard we're gonna be making. And we will be cutting some of it off on the end, but I'll show you here. So we're gonna take that, cut that off. And then depending on how large of a hole you have for your lanyard hole on your knife, um, the one on the Mannix is uh, quite a bit larger than the one here on the Kubi knife that we're going to be doing. So it's, it's going to be easier to get it through this one, obviously. You might have to melt this a little bit and make a little bit of a point on it to get it through a hole that's smaller like it is here on this one. But we'll, we'll show you that here in a minute. So you're going to push this through there and then even that out. And then we're going to take our, depending on what bead we're going to use, I think on this one I'm just going to use this classic, the classic skull bead on there. So what we'll need to do to get the cord through there is we're going to have to heat these up. We're going to have to melt these two together. So get them a little hot, not super super hot but just get the tip a little bit hot enough that it, it it's going to melt together and it'll do that for you that way you can push that through the top of your skull bead or whatever bead you're going to be using push that through there and you want to hold these together between your thumb and your uh, finger there and then press it and then together and then twist it and you're just trying to feed it through and eventually you'll see it pop out the bottom of the skull just like that and that's what you want then you can grab that and pull that together slide the skull up now what I like to do is put it close enough to the knife that it uh, it'll keep it from swinging around to the other side you don't want to have this thing so loose that it's going to swing around this way underneath where the blade comes out because then it could catch the blade when it comes out. So you want to have it far enough up that it keeps it from going around, but it's not so tight that it's going to be sticking straight up like that. You want it to be able to lay, lay down a little bit. So I'm thinking probably about right there is going to be good. Then you're going to take your micro cord. We're going to use the black and probably gonna need um, a good length. I'm thinking maybe, maybe two feet of this cord. So one foot, once you, once you double it over, it's gonna be about one foot on each side. Will probably be more than enough. And we'll cut that. And then you're just gonna start your cobra stitch over the top of your paracord so we're going to get this even so that the ends are the same length and then we'll start from underneath and then we'll do a standard cobra stitch and the first two are going to be a little tricky trying to get this situated where exactly where you're going to want it um, so just take your time doing that you don't want to pull too tight. You want to uh, make sure that your stitch is going to be nice and even. That way it looks really good. Once you get those two set, then you'll be able to really start kind of cinching everything up. You want your first two knots to be pretty good where they're even. That should be about that should be about right. And then you're going to slide that up underneath your skull. So those two knot, 
knots you just got right there, you're gonna slide those two underneath. And then you just can continue doing, tying your Cobra stitch. And I usually like to make eight um, knots on each side. So each one of these right here is gonna be a knot. So I've already got two on each side. So then just keep continuing. We'll keep going until we get eight of those on each side. If you want it longer, obviously tie more knots. If you want it shorter, whatever looks good to you, then you can just tie less and then you'll be able to finish your lanyard there. But I found that about seven or eight is really, for me, that's, that's uh, the, about the right size. It's not too long of a lanyard, it's not too short. Just works out really good and I think it looks I think it looks nice as well. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that should be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So we'll just do one more on each side and then we'll be done. So it's super quick to do as well. So there we go. That's the finished lanyard. You can pull the skull down and then all we'll need to do is trim this stuff up. So to finish it, all you're gonna need to do is trim this right here. You're gonna wanna leave a little bit. You don't wanna leave a little bit of a tag on there like that so that when you melt it, you're gonna melt that and then press that in to itself so that it locks in. And then we'll do the same thing on this other side. Do that just a little bit, do a little bit on there, and then we'll melt that one. And press that into itself. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the paracord just right here, just beneath where we put the micro cord on there, and then we'll melt that together, and then you'll just have this little tag that ends up being your lanyard. So same thing here, you wanna cut it where it's pretty close, but you're gonna leave some paracord hanging out like that, so that when you melt it all together, um, it's gonna make a nice little just smooth round um, end. So let's go ahead and melt that. Just Kind of keep your flame moving around. You don't want to leave it in any one spot because you don't want to burn your micro cord that you just put on there. And you'll see as you keep moving it, those two pieces of paracord are going to melt together. It's going to make a nice little round ring on the bottom there. And then once that cools off, it'll be nice and smooth kind of looks like glass almost and that's what finishes the lanyard off so I'll pull this out of here and let you look at it so there it is right there and then there's the back the back side of it all right so I'll show you the other stitch that we're gonna do on this kubi knife and i'll show you how to do just the snake knot and then you can do as many of those as many of those as you want on there i'm going to use some of this uh, green cord i don't remember the actual name of this i already pulled the tag the packaging off of this one so i'm not sure what 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 uh exactly the name of this cord is for the color But if I can find it, I will, I will label it below. So on this one, the hole, like I mentioned, is quite a bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of heat up, kind of heat this up a little bit and then just kind of pull it together. And that should help us. Nope, didn't melt it enough. So let's use the other end. We'll pull it together on itself. Yeah, that's gonna work a lot better. All right, then you can slide that through there, just like that. Now, I don't, 
depending on how long you want this, usually I make these about five knots or you can make them five or six knots, usually is a good. So what you wanna do is take this cord, your left cord over the right cord and then swing it completely around so that it's completely going around your right cord. And then you just bend your right cord back and you come in between, right there, in between your left cord that's shooting across to your left and this where it was coming down from the bottom. And then there's a hole right here that you've created on the bottom. I'll show you that right here. There's a hole that you created right there. And you're gonna take that right cord and just put it straight in that hole. And when you do, these two will come together and it's kind of like with the other one, you just want to have this up as close as it, as it can go, but it doesn't go around to hit where the blade opens and you just kind of push it back on itself. And that's all you do. You just do that knot over and over again. So you'll take this one, the left, and go around the right. And then you've created a little hole there and then you just take the right cord and go back around and through the hole. And then you just push those and cinch it right on top. Kind of pull on each of those and cinch it. And those knots just sit right on top of each other. And that's what makes the snake knot. So we'll do that a few more times to finish this one off. And then I'll show you how it's pretty similar to the other one. You're just going to cut both of the ends off. Now you, you don't have to cut the ends off. You could leave them if you wanted to. Kind of like this one over here on my little EDC tool. I did a bunch of those on here and then I just left them like that. So that's another option to do. Just depends on how long of a lanyard you want. You can make it as long as you want. Um, or you can just end it like this, where we did on the other one. You just cut the paracord and then you just melt it down so it's smooth like that and that will lock it in where it won't come apart. So let's finish this one. We've got a couple more knots to put on this one and we'll be done. Let's cinch that up. So there's, and then obviously if you wanted to put a bead on there, it would be the same thing. Before you started your knot, you slide on your bead just like we did on the other one and then start tying your knot. So we'll do one more knot here like that. Slide that one up on there. There you go. There's five of them on there. And then if you want to, you can cut. Same thing when you cut the paracord, just leave you a little, a little tag, a little tag in there so that you have something to actually melt back into the paracord, back into itself. Just kind of keep moving around until it gets nice and smooth. Some people like to actually press um, the paracord back in to itself like they would use the lighter get it hot like that and then they would press it in but I actually think it looks nicer when it's smooth and has like a glass texture to it so I don't press it on these I just let it cool on itself on its own and then you can do the same thing on this side this leave yourself a little tag there like that and then just keep your flame moving around so you don't burn your other cord. Just make sure you leave yourself enough cord. I cut that one just a little bit, a little short, but it's still gonna work. There you go. And then just kind of make sure they're all facing the right way. And I'll give you a better just like that. That way when you go to, if you're sitting down or if you have a pocket clip like this, that's extremely uh, deep carry, and especially if you're sitting down and you wanna grab your knife, instead of having to kind of lean back and try to fish into your pocket to try to grab it, this is already hanging out of your pocket. So all you do is just grab with your pinky there and then your you know last two fingers and then as you pull, then you'll be able to grab the knife with your hand as it comes out of the pocket, and then you're able to go ahead and open and use your knife. So 
There's just a couple of ideas. That's the way I like to use them, and I think they look great, and uh, hopefully you think they look great as well. And like I said, we'll leave all of the paracord uh, links on the bottom and uh, links for the Schmuckatelli beads, and you guys can go and check those out. All right, guys, there you have it. Paracord lanyards for your knives. Um, before we get out of here, I did want to remind everyone we are still doing a giveaway for two Kubi knives and a Kubi case. If you haven't seen our first video dismantling the knives of Kubi knives and giving a review of those, um, get over there and watch it. We'll leave a link to that up here somewhere and you can go and check that out and get registered for it. All the instructions for the giveaway are down in the description of that video. Well, that's it guys. That's all we've got for you today. Really appreciate you hanging out. Um, so until the next episode, remember to keep those tips up.